Well, good morning. Praise the Lord. As the, uh, the psalmist said, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Praise the Lord. Uh, God made the sunshine and he also made the rain. And, uh, and your life, my life is in his hands. Praise the Lord. And I'm glad you joined me uh, with me this morning as we uh, finish out this uh, week of prayer. Now, it doesn't mean we're going to stop praying after this, but uh, as far as this special prayer focus of, of uh, looking at the names and nature of uh, Jesus, uh, today is the last day. And, um, but we're, the, the topic uh, this morning is the incomparable Jesus. And uh, so stay with me, and uh, we're going to delve into that uh, topic in just a moment. Praise the Lord. Um, if you have been enjoying uh, these readings through Dick Eastman's book, uh, Awesome, the, the uh, Nature and Names of Jesus, um, you, can, you can pick this uh, devotional book up um, in a number of places. Uh, uh, My Healthy Church, which used to be Gospel Publishing House, um, Amazon, uh, Christian Book Distributors, and um, uh, it's actually a 31-day devotional, and uh, we're on day seven of our, our week of prayer. And uh, actually, uh, we're jumping to day 31. And uh, so obviously, uh, we only uh, read through a fourth of, of this book. And um, so anyway, um, praise the Lord. Uh, there's no other name like Jesus. And in this day 31, the incomparable Jesus, exploring the wonders of Christ's greatness. <clears throat> Everything about God is great, vast, incomparable. He never forgets. He never fails. He never falters. He never forfeits his word. To every declaration of promise or prophecy, the Lord has exactly adhered. And that was written by A.W. Pink. And it's so so true. Scottish uh, Presbyterian pra pastor, theologian, and professor Samuel Rutherford, uh, 1600 to 1661, wrote of Jesus these words. Were there, ten, were there 10,000 millions of heavens created above these highest heavens, and again as many above them, and as many above them till angels were, but uh, angels were wearied with counting, it were it were but too low a seat to fix the princely throne of that Lord Jesus, whose ye are above them all. Praise God. Some 21 centuries before Rutherford's birth in 1600, Ethan the Ezraite, this is 539 B.C., would seemingly speak in the Psalms of Rutherford's wearied angels when he wrote these words in Psalm 89. All heaven will praise your great wonders, O Lord. Myriads of angels will praise you for your faithfulness. For who in all of heaven can compare with the Lord? What mightiest angel is anything like the Lord? 
the highest angelic powers stand in awe of God. He is far more awesome than all who surround his throne. Praise God. Everything extraordinary. We come to the end of our journey together and spending a month in the sun, but the end of our journey is really just a beginning. There is so much more of Jesus waiting to be discovered. I invite you to begin again with day one in this book. What a glorious habit. Spending each new day basking in the sun, and that's S-O-N, sun. But first we need to saturate ourselves in revelation of the incomparable Jesus. Incomparable of course, immediately suggests that whatever you are speaking about in using that word means nothing can compare to it. A fuller definition of comparable reads, having no comparison or no equal, matchless, unequaled, unmatched, unparalleled, unrivaled, unsurpassable, exceptional, extraordinary, eminent beyond comparison, not suitable for any comparison. Praise the Lord. Christ meets any and all definitions, descriptions, adjectives, modifiers, or any other manner of descriptions when we speak of him as the incomparable Jesus. Napoleon Bonaparte was clearly correct when he said of Jesus, everything in Christ astonishes me. Neither history nor humanity, nor the ages, nor the nature or nor nature, I'm sorry, offer me anything with which I am able to compare him and by which I am able to explain him. Here is everything extraordinary. Nothing but Jesus. In every way, Christ is supremely incomparable. No other religious founder, philosopher, sage, prophet, statesman or any other hero or hero, heroine or historic figure is worthy of the worship Christ deserves. He is incomparable in his mercy, incomparable in his compassion, incomparable in his humility, and incomparable in his beauty. He is quite simply incomparably unique Indeed, Christ embodies the word unique. One and only, having no like or equal, unparalleled, existing only in one known example. Amen. Only one known example. That is awesome. There is no other Jesus. There is only one Christ. Christ alone is that one known example. He is unquestionably incomparable. Return with me for just a moment to review the encounter when three of Christ's apostles saw the Lord in his incomparable splendor. On what theologians refer to as the Mount of Transfiguration. And this is Mark chapter 9, uh, verses 2 and following in the Message uh, Bible, Message Translation. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain. His appearance changed from the inside out, right before their eyes. His clothes shimmered, glistening white. Just then a light, radiant cloud enveloped them, and from deep in the cloud a voice, This is my son, marked by my love. Listen to him. The next minute the disciples were looking around, rubbing their eyes, seeing nothing but Jesus, only Jesus. The Apostle Paul would later see Christ in a similar dramatic encounter on the Damascus Road when his name was yet Saul. Until that moment, he was a feared persecutor of Christians. The Passion Translation describes that moment just outside the city, Damascus. From heaven suddenly exploded. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me start that one over. Just outside the city, Damascus, a brilliant light flashing from heaven suddenly exploded all around him. Falling to the ground, he heard a booming voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So powerful was that moment that Saul was left blind for three days. Thus would begin one of the most remarkable conversions in the history of the church, 
Saul had encountered the incomparable Christ. He would soon become Paul, the chief apostle. And you know, just as a, as a side note, um, Paul, Paul was a terrorist. And he, the Bible is clear in speaking of him that if God could save him, and God saved him as an example so that everyone would know if God could save him, he could save anybody. And, uh, you know, in the world we live in, we, we see terrorists. And uh, we read about it in the news and the bombings and the shootings and all kinds of things that take place. And we need to remember, God wants us to remember that God saved Paul and God is able to save them. You know, God doesn't want our hearts to be, uh, to be full of, of bitterness and fear and anger, but we need to see these terrorists <clears throat> as future Apostle Pauls. God, the incomparable Jesus, loves them, died for them, and is able to save them. And uh, just as Paul was deceived, he thought he was serving God. He thought he was doing God a service in persecuting and killing Christians and you know what? That's what these Islamic um, terrorists believe. They believe that they're serving God. And, uh, but praise the Lord, we need to pray, God, wake them up as you did Paul. Lord, show yourself to them. Reveal yourself to them. Save them. And so, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, don't become bitter. Pray. Pray for these people. They're deceived. They were raised. They were raised in deception. This is all they know. But God is able. Amen? That's, that's something to pray about today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Excuse me. New sights of glory. Vital for every Christ follower to recognize is that there are new sights of glory to be discovered in spending in, intimate time daily with the incomparable Jesus. He is all. He is everything. He is enough. Like the three invitees accompanying Christ, into a light radiant cloud atop a Judean mountain where their Savior was transfigured, may we have those moments when we too rub our eyes and see nothing but Jesus, only Jesus. Amen. Help us, Lord. Return a final time with me to Paul's writings to the Ephesian Christians. In this letter, Paul speaks of how Christ was raised up, uh, how, how Christ has raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. You know, that's, that's an incredible, uh, you know, God help us wrap our minds around that, that, that right now in Jesus we're seated with him. We're seated with him. Praise the Lord. Later in that same letter, Paul shares his personal testimony to me, though I am the very least of all the saints. And he calls himself that because even though he knew he was forgiven all his life, he said, I'm not worthy to, to be an apostle because I persecuted the church of Christ. But he says, to me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. <clears throat> Two expressions leap from the text. Imme immeasurable riches and unsearchable riches. Immeasurable means that which cannot be measured, boundless. Unsearchable means that which cannot be searched, mysterious. Together, those definitions and all else we have shared on this uh, shared on every page of this book, spells for us a single name, Jesus. Starting tomorrow, let's spend another month in the sun. Praise the Lord. And this is a prayer that Dick Eastman has written in his book. And, uh, and just, just pray this in your heart with me as I, as I read this. <clears throat> Jesus, I thank you for the gift of this month, or for, Lord, for the gift of this week my personal week in the sun. As I've basked in the wonder of your incomparable presence, thank you for leading me through these seven days, for encountering me in the midst of each of them as I've explored new wonders of yourself and your heart to me. 
I pray, my incomparable Lord, that I might carry this habit of practicing your presence forward into my everyday life. May I become increasingly aware of your awesome greatness daily. I long to discover new wonders about you continually. Oh, how incomparable are your great names. They are for me a continual feast for joyful worship and reflection. They remind me there is so much more of you to know. Keep me knowing. Keep me exploring. Reveal yourself to me afresh each day. There is truly none like you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May it be. May it be. Let us not become uh, sidetracked in, in what the world has to offer. And, uh, you know, the, the, the latest uh, clothing styles, gadgets, cars, whatever it might be. Just help us, Lord, to be just caught up with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and again, Dick Eastman puts out uh, a few points of practical a- application. Four steps. Number one, explore. Uh, take time to meditate on this quality of Christ. Number two, experience. Uh, turn your meditation into prayer that this quality might impact your life today. Number three, express. During your quiet time, take a moment to journal your thoughts, even if briefly. And number four, exalt. Pray, praise, or even spontaneously sing your way through today's list of the names of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Um, This last list, he he, uh, entitled, Glorify His Name. This is Psalm 148, 13. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. Praise the Lord. And uh, he, uh, Dick Eastman had, had um, cataloged these names from A to Z. And so this is, this is the last um, uh, devotional in his book, Day 31. And so we're going to go to Z. <laughs> and uh, we're starting on you, uh, or the end of you. Unshakable God, Psalm 1846. Unspeakable gift, 2 Corinthians 9.15. Upholding all things, Hebrews 1 and verse 3. The vine, John 15.5. The visible image of the invisible God, Colossians 1.15. A warrior, Exodus 15.3. The way, the truth, and the life, John 14.6. <clears throat> White hot fire, Malachi 3 and verse 2, and that's from the message. Wide river of protection, or a wide river of protection, Isaiah 33, 21. A witness to the people, Isaiah 55, 4. Wonderful counselor, Isaiah 9 and verse 6. The word made flesh, John 12, 48. The word of God, Revelation 19, 13. The word of life, 1 John 1, 1. The world's light, John 8, 12. Your bodyguard, hallelujah, Psalm 34, 20. Your confidence, Proverbs 3, 26. Your everlasting light, Isaiah 60 and 20. Your exceedingly great reward, Genesis 15, 1. Your glorious sword, Deuteronomy 33, 29. Your guardian God, Psalm 121 and verse 3, and that's from the message. Your holy one, Acts 2, 27. Your keeper, Psalm 121 and verse 5. Your personal God, Isaiah 43, 3. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Your sacred one, Acts 2, 27. Your security, Proverbs 3, 26. Your shade, Psalm 121, 5. And Zion, dwelling God, Psalm 9 and verse 11. And that's the message. Praise the Lord. Boy, I just uh, wanted to stop for a moment. Your personal God. (laughs) Praise the Lord. He's your personal God. He's my personal God. 
I'm so glad that God has revealed himself to us. He is our father. We're his sons and daughters. He's a personal God. Jesus is a personal Savior. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm glad you joined me today. And uh, let me say a closing prayer. And uh, amen. Let's pray together. Lord, <laughs> Lord, you are awesome. You are awesome. You are incomparable, Jesus. And uh, Lord, may we see you high and lifted up every day and worthy of praise. God, give us grace to not get focused, Lord. Really, every, every problem in our life is really a mohill. God, it's not a mountain. Lord, when we look at you, we see everything else. Lord, the hills melt like wax before you. Lord, help us to keep our focus on you, that the problems of this life may just melt like wax in comparison to you. Lord, you know each and every person who is uh, joined in and, is, and, and Lord, the things they're facing in life. And uh, Father, I pray that Jesus would be lifted up before their hearts, before their eyes. Lord, as incomparable. Lord, that their problems and the things they're facing would just melt away, knowing that Jesus, if, if you did not, Lord, withhold giving yourself for us, Lord, laying your life down for them. Lord, there's, so, there's, there's nothing that you, that, that you won't do for them. Lord, your word says that. Father, if you, had, if you did not spare your only son but delivered him up for us all, how much more along with him will you freely give us all things? And so, Lord, I pray, Lord, that your victory and your peace and joy would just arise in their hearts. Lord, let a hedge of protection be around us. And Lord, let us sing th uh, through the rest of this day in the days to come, and, and glorify you with our lives and our lips. Lord, we love you, we give you praise, and we thank you for this time of prayer. And Lord, bless us as, Lord, some of us haven't had our, our personal time of prayer yet today with you. And Lord, just, um, just bless especially, Lord, the time we just get, get into our prayer closets. Lord, we get down on our knees and spend time with you today. And uh, Lord, draw us closer to you and and just uh, use us for your glory, Holy Spirit, to be, uh, to, to be a, a priest, to intercede, Lord, for this hurting and dying world. We thank you, Lord, in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Well, thanks again for joining us. God bless you, and hopefully uh, we can see you tomorrow in church. Amen. Yeah.